Hey there, it's Sunday afternoon. I released a video on the <laughs> paint job that I did on the subwoofer this morning. Working on that off and off for about three weeks, and that was interesting. It was a little bit discouraging <laughs> when I started uh, sanding it uh, before I d determined that it could be scraped more effectively. And if I had to do it again, I would be a little bit more deliberate about it. I would also select a better paint. Uh, the stuff that I bought was basically the cheapest stuff that I could find because I, I didn't know whether this was going to work. I didn't know if I was going to have to strip it all off again. And also, I didn't suspect that the paint would, uh, would, would behave like that because typically the spray paint that I bought before sands fairly well after it's dried for a certain amount of time. The best results would come from using something like automotive paint, like a two-pack two, uh, two pack system. But of course, that's a whole other ball of wax and I didn't want to get into something like that. Maybe if it was something important or more important than my subwoofer, I would. But I, I think the results are pretty good. Anyway, enough about that. If you haven't seen the video, um, I recommend going and watching it. It's only about six minutes. Not a big deal. Um, what have I got here? I got my my uh, <clears throat> lift and tilt from the original big table saw build. You know, I've been thinking about what I can do with it. I'm not going to build another table saw, at least not for the foreseeable future. And to be honest, I think that the next table saw that I would attempt to build, or I wouldn't attempt to build it, because I'm, I'm very much Yoda, all right? I do or I do not. I build it or I build not. Okay, so the next one that I would build would be made from, mostly from steel. As in frame, everything, all of it, basically steel, you know, tubing, uh, angle, uh, sheet, everything like that, okay? No wood or a very minimum of wood. So what I'm thinking about doing with this one is taking it and putting it in my existing table saw as a, uh, um, a thing for cutting dados. So I'd have a specialized saw within a saw for cutting dados and then it wouldn't have to tilt so I could take the trunnions off and there are some other things that I could take off here. And this is lifted by that motor arrangement that I had, if you can recall. And I would keep that because that works well. It, it moves it up enough that I can fine tune it well enough. And I have a motor for it. It's the original motor that I had for this. I keep knocking stuff on the floor. It's the original motor that I have for this. And so I would use that. Like I say, no tilt, it'd be just a lift, and it'd be just a single, um, you know, toggle switch for up and then down on the front of the saw to control it. And a switch to turn it on, of course, as well. Okay, what else is going on here? The things that just fell down on the floor are the diffusers from from the lights that I had up in the ceiling. Now, <laughs> I, do, I made all these fixtures for the lights in the ceiling and I installed them and everything was good, except the light output wasn't as bright as I would have hoped. And then recently I took a picture of something on my table saw that I had to get a thumbnail. I think it was a box, I think it was the box joint jig or something. And the light output that I was getting from my fixture that I have up on the gantry wasn't bright enough. And it's the same LED strips as these ones up here. So I took the diffuser out of that and it made it a lot brighter. It made it bright enough that I could take the picture. So I knew this. I knew that the output was a lot brighter without the diffuser. However, with the diffuser, you don't get a lot of hard shadows. The light is a lot softer. I've got another problem with these lights. They flicker. As in, um, I had to set the, the shutter speed on the camera to 1 over 40, and that was the only setting that I could find 
where I didn't have any flicker that was noticeable in the shots. And this is especially noticeable if you speed stuff up. So anyway, to fix that, I had a bunch of these. These are capacitors. And um, I assumed that the flicker was coming from the power supply, as in the power supply has some ripple that's uh, showing up in the camera because the LEDs are, are flickering. Because LEDs, the reason why LEDs flicker it's because they don't get hot like a, like an incandescent bulb. An incandescent bulb flickers as well, but it stays hot, okay? You get it up to temperature, and then that small amount of variation in the ripple in the AC will not really be noticeable because the element stays red hot. Whereas LEDs cool down real quick, and you'll see that flickering. So, I figure while I'm taking the diffusers out and not doing all the work that I did before, I'll wire in one of these capacitors on each fixture and see if that solves the problem. And yes, it solved the problem as far as I could see. I've tried it, like originally I tried it with one fixture and it's impossible to see because you got too much light in the room from the other ones that's still flickering. And then I got half the room done again and I tried it again and I saw that there was less. And then when I did the full room, which is what you're watching right now, uh, there's no flicker at all. So it's a good thing, it's a fix. I had these for many years and they're rated at 50 volts, uh, 4,700 microfarads. So a pretty good smoothing cap for a small load like that. And like I say, I put one on every fixture that I took down. I still left a couple up but some of these fixtures are wired together into the same power supply. So if you have one of these going to the power supply through one fixture, it'll help smooth the other one. Better to have it on both of them, but I, like I said, it's completely solved the problem. Now as for the um, uh, diffuser problem, the directivity of light, like I've got these ones down here on this end, like there are six down there, they're all uncovered. I don't mind the um, shadows down there. Over the table saw, I left the ones up in the thing so that I wouldn't get any um, glare is the problem there or down on the table saw. And then the ones on either side, what I'm gonna do with those when I get another box of it, that is, is cover them with, um, what's that stuff called? It's not wax paper, parchment paper. Culinary parchment paper. I cut it to length and cut it to width taped it into uh, like a tube and I slipped it over the fixture and it gives just exactly the right amount of diffusion uh, without changing the color of the light and also lets all of the light come through so you're not dimming it unnecessarily. Sometimes there would be a gizmo. A gizmo? He had a device he called the intruder. It was something he had the engineers at the factory design. And then he had a prototype built out of the parts from our vacuum cleaner. I see. And so the vacuum cleaner wasn't available to me for several months.